Welcome to the Bathroom Break Podcast. I'm your host, Rab himself, and today I'm sitting here with band member from Lion Eyes, Hank Upton. Dude. How's it going? <laughs> it's going, man. Thanks, Thanks. for uh, inviting me into your We Workspace. <laughs> yes, our We Workspace. Here we are. We've we've been here a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're real settled in, and mm-hmm. I know all the ins and outs of this place. <laughs> yeah, dude. So what? So what are these things? You you can just kind of rent like a office space or something? Y- yeah, it seems that way. It, yeah, it's kind of kind of just like an Amazon headquarters version of. Office, okay, office yeah. space. Yeah. yeah, it makes sense. It's super nice. There's like a bar over there. And yeah, I'm totally out of place yeah. being here. In t- like anytime there's like a grain t- countertop and young people enjoying themselves, I'm like, I clearly shouldn't fucking be here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You, there's free coffee, you say? I don't belong. Unless it's like a Motel 6 yeah, 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 lobby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't feel this comfortable. This is much above your pay grade. It's yeah, like, I don't feel comfortable. Yeah. No. I am out of sorts here. Yeah. Uh, that's hilarious. So, um, so you guys are in town right now in LA just uh kind of catching up on some things and yeah meeting finalizing some, stuff meeting or? some people playing some acoustic uh acoustic shows nice. here and there don't ask me the details <laughs> some other band members will have more detail <laughs> I'm willfully ignorant it's yeah yeah for me. Dude, that's the way to do it man yeah. and uh and, and you, you uh play bass or, you, or I play the bass yeah. yeah 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 so um that's rad. I mean, I feel like that position is the position to just like show up, play the show, have a few beers, hang out and enjoy yourself. And then what's next, guys? You figure it out. Well, nobody, <laughs> the thing about the bass is nobody notices till you stop playing. Right. So <laughs> it's sort of like the, uh, it's yeah. sort of like the 99% of life is showing up. Right. Like keep time, be there, kick ass, you know, and they'll notice when you stop. One day you don't show up. You yes. Know, you know, that's the only leverage of the bass player. No one's playing bass to get weighed. I yeah. mean, some misguided young people are doing that. <laughs> misguided like, is the You know what I mean? Here. Like, yeah. the, the people that have their heads on straight are trying to be singers and guitar players, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. You know, they're not trying to be the guy in the back making sure they hold down A. For fucking, you know, that's not, that's not really the going to be dream. back here being the backbone of this whole thing, but no one's noticing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'll look like I'm experienced experiencing a, a series of small seizures the entire time you know? <laughs> that was my plan hell yeah dude mm-hmm. well so what got you into like playing the bass did you originally play guitar or how, how did no, that I, I played you know middle school clarinet then saxophone then okay. acoustic guitar and then i heard uh blood sugar sex magic i got it randomly yeah. at a thrift shop on some fam- family Fuck vacation yeah. <laughs> and then i had like annoyed the living shit out of my parents within those like five days of the vacation to the point where they sold my saxophone and got me a bass. Oh, and I just learned how to play all of that record by ear. Dude, that's rad. And then I was like, oh, this is the coolest thing. Yeah, that's fucking amazing. Yeah. So, so Flea was was a big uh, influence. That was the in, thing in the that early. started it. Yeah. yeah, and then you know Bootsy Collins and George Porter and Geezer Butler and Stanley Clark and uh, Mark Sandman and. Yeah, you so know. you just so you just dove right in and all like and how old did you say you were when you? Uh, I was twelve. So damn, so from twelve on, you were just like. Yeah, I was like, this is the thing. Yeah, that's the thing to do. It, this is the coolest. Yeah, like nothing's cooler than what the bass can do. You yeah, know? and everybody plays guitar, so. Yeah. I and, found and the just, secret cool thing. Yeah, you know, like, you're like I'll be over here just kind of doing my thing. That, yeah, that's rad. And and uh, and so then, like, th- did you sort of quickly get involved with playing with people or were you kind of doing your own thing for a while and then no, i've been in one i've been in one band or another every day of my life since i was 14 years old oh shit that's so, like yeah one way or another i was that was the thing to do i was lucky that way i was like yeah i know that i was like fucking office I just need to figure out a way to do this. This is more fun. Yeah. Unless, of course, it's a we workspace. Of course, I would never <laughs> say anything bad about. Yeah. We're an, an advertisement for this. Yes. Yeah. No, I would never do that. We work. We work. Yeah. Man, we're getting a lot of work done here. The uh, so that's awesome though. And I was wondering, like, as a bassist, were you kind of more sought after? Because I think, like you said, like everybody wants to jump on a guitar or be the front man singing and. Everybody wants yeah. that attention. So then it's kind of like 
there's more than enough guitar players. We'll figure that out. Yeah. Where the bassist there or the drummer, you're sort of like, fuck, we got to get that to really get the, the, the foundation of the band. And then... Yeah, bass players are kind of sought after the way that someone is seeking after a tire iron on the side of a fucking highway. Like, <laughs> yeah. they just realized they need one. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You know, like, they didn't have great passion for it 20 minutes ago. They're yeah. like, ah, oh, fuck, this kind of doesn't work anymore. <laughs> but that was my experience when I was a teenager anyway. Yeah. It was basically like, we need to find somebody who can fucking actually do this instead of having the worst guitar player we know just come the bass player right that, I mean, which that is usually here. what they do yeah or what happened when i was in high school it was like fuck it jeremy sucks all right <laughs> we're getting you a squire here fucking just play a just play eighth notes and shut the fuck up <laughs> yeah. like that was like yeah. generally what would happen so uh no i got I was pseudo sought after it. Like I remember in not, the first or like second band I joined, I was a freshman in high school. Yeah. And basically some seniors just heard me in the jazz band practice room. I was probably wearing like a third eye blind t shirt. I don't fucking know. <laughs> don't uh, admit that. Was, don't admit that. I was sitting there, <laughs> I was sitting there playing something in the practice room and these fucking senior kids heard me like, You're in our band now. Be this place at two thirty. Fuck you. <laughs> no, they just like, bullied you into the no, being in the band. I was like Bart Simpson. Awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was Whoa. my reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> Especially, yeah, you're young, the seniors are the cool ones. Oh and, yeah. yeah, those guys I think are terrible like me. <laughs> yeah. You know, that was basically my reaction <laughs> that's high school in a nutshell really mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. so that that's rad so then uh like once you started playing in bands did you do battle the band stuff in high school yeah or? yeah i won my we won our i guess it was my junior year whatever who gives a fuck we won that one of those years yeah. and i told all these these girls that i had crushes on to come and uh two of them came with joints in their bags and it was they happened to be doing the montgomery county maryland battle of the bands at the montgomery county courthouse which was like i hadn't thought about because you know i'm 16 year old dipshit or whatever anyway so i got these girls i was trying to like impress arrested entering <laughs> the battle of the bands. i'm sure they were impressed yes they yeah. were uh and we i think we won uh i think the big hit was us covering uh stink fist Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was that was the crowd pleaser. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So you guys won that year. Yeah. So, and this was another band. What was that band? Oh fuck, Random Access. It was called. I think they okay. got the name off the top of a CD player. Yeah, or like the backstage pass. Yeah, I was yeah. like fifteen, and I was like, whatever you say. That's yeah, yeah. The, you know. <laughs> sure, I'll just. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know. Nice. Yeah. So, so how did uh, how did your band now, Lion Eyes? How did you guys form? I mean, you guys have been around a while, right? Um, I let me see how much I can condense this. Um, yeah, I uh, I met Nate when I was fifteen. Okay. So it's we're in year twenty now. I met Nate when I was fifteen, and he was looking around for people to play a house party, uh, and you needed a bass player. And through asking around. He found out about me and was just like, "Hey, I got a band. Come, we're gonna rehearse and play this house party." Uh, and it was something. It was in Olney, Maryland, and uh, yeah, it's some you know, it was a big house. And we get three hundred kids there. We play a bunch of covers or whatever. Of course, the cops come. I get a drinking citation, and that was like how I met <laughs> Nate. He just got me to show up to this one event yeah. where I got you know ended up in a in na with my dad as a 15 year old because i got a drinking <laughs> citation drinking in na <laughs> yeah. well, they, when you get when you're 15 and you have to go to na because of a drinking citation they generally put you with well my experience was it was just a bunch of um teen girls that were, had been shoplifting because they oh. send them to what NA. The too. <laughs> so it's my dad having to get them in there <laughs> just yeah. put them all in there yeah. <laughs> anyway that's how i that's how i met uh nate and then so at that at that show that he had you play, you yeah, got like he got trouble. this band together, got me to play bass, and the... then I was arrested. And then <laughs> did you get to play the show at all? Oh, we played the show, most of it. Okay, yeah, before, <laughs> yeah, most of it, most of it. Like, come with me. We're just gonna take you with the girl shoplifters. <laughs> yeah, and that was like twenty years ago. So, and then it was another five, five or six years till we like started the lionized thing, getting serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's rad. And then, um, so, okay, what year is that then? That's in 2004 or 5 or whatever? Yeah, 
yeah in that area about that yeah yeah so okay when you guys form what was the original like the original lineup was guys from from high school stuff or, or from um the ori- i mean the original lineup was always me well there was a bass i'm lying because they'll contradict me there yeah. was a bass <laughs> player there was technically a bass player before me he didn't um, care. he didn't care. he, he, he was I, he was a guitar I, player that turned I, into that's a bass what i tell people <laughs> yeah. yeah but so about 15 years ago me and chris and nate and we've sort of had uh Spinal Tapian drummer, drummer yeah. evolution. Yeah. Because um, JP from Clutch plays with you guys too, right? Yeah. Well, he did the the new record Panic Attack that's about to come out. Oh, hell uh, yeah. He played on that. But also those Clutch guys have been, you know, uh, inspiring us and helping us out and that's rad recording with us for a long time in yeah. a lot of different ways. Yeah, so. dude. It's funny because um, I always tell this story like because... Uh, 2000, you know, I was on, uh, like when 2000 hit Jackass came out and I was yeah. on Jackass with, you know, Bam and Ryan and all the guys from Westchester that we grew up with and did the CKY videos. Mm-hmm. And when that kind of happened, all of a sudden we started meeting like celebrity people or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. and you're like meeting these people. And I just remember, cause I had this like chip on my shoulders. Like, I don't fucking give a shit about these people. Fuck these people. And then when I met Neil Fallon, because I fucking loved clutch. Yeah. I was kind of yeah. like, Hey, oh, Hey, yeah. like, you know, and all like that's, uncomfortable that and like feeling intimidated. Sucks, yeah. It? It's not yeah. a terrible feeling. Yeah, I was like intimidated by it, but you met like, you know, you meet like the biggest person and it's yeah. like, oh, Hey, what's up? Well, because deep yeah. down your whole goal is like, I want this person I admire to like me. <laughs> yeah. And your, your game plan is to act like a fucking weirdo. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. I don't know. Like that's, yeah. that's, like, that's how you're going to accomplish your deep-seated, you know. Yeah, yeah. How it's awful. It's a terrible feeling when that happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, like, he's an intimidating dude. He writes fucking incredible, like, lyrics, and, and uh, he sings like a badass, and you're just like... Hey, uh, I'm sort of nervous when you meet him. But how was that? Like, did, were you a fan of Clutch before you had met them? Or um, I was. I was like, I knew a couple Clutch songs. Yeah, uh, and I liked them, but I was certainly not like hip. But so, how, how far are they from where you grew up? Like, um, I mean, they're they. I'm about to knock that guitar over. Uh, they, uh, they're <laughs> they grew up in you know counties very close to us. Yeah. And slash Fred. Now they're like stationed more north. But anyway, stationed, uh, like stationed. In the military. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, we like, you know, you knew him as a Maryland band. Yeah. But I wasn't like fully informed. Yeah. Uh, and I became a, a big fan of, along the way. Yeah. And so they kind of have they they've kind of helped along the way in terms of a lot you guys. yes yeah. more than anyone else has, has helped clutch has helped you know yeah. they decided at some point like well these guys don't completely suck <laughs> yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll kind of see what we can do to help you guys out so yeah they, you know they've been yeah they're um we owe a lot to clutch for the help they give they yeah given us. yeah that's rad and so uh, I was kind of chatting with you guys a little bit before, but it's just crazy that, that JP has the time to come play on the album and do that because they tour nonstop. And, yeah, but the thing is, even when they're not touring, JP's playing drums. Yeah, that's the thing. JP somewhere does. <laughs> that's what he does. He's yeah. playing drums. Yeah, you know that's so that that's his thing. Yeah. So if he has the you know if he has the time he and he can be playing drums you know yeah that's rad. So yeah. so how does that process of making the album kind of come together or like with uh the uh panic attack the new one yeah um we basically hit him up about it he was like he said sure thing no i meant more like you guys i know like he he, is he is he writing no or no yeah no he okay uh, we we like made really crude demos with like a yeah garage band drummer yeah you know just like added the track and then we went in room and we wrote it actually with jp and rearranged it oh right you know, workshopped it for a couple months with him. So, I mean, yeah, he wrote the record with us. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. So, and so you guys all kind of collaborate together to, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, that's always been the thing that I, that kind of defines the only thing about us. The one, the only definitive thing really about all the records is that it's me, Chris and Nate all working together on the same thing. And it's a, that's awesome. It's a democracy. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's hope. really cool, though, yeah. because, I mean, a lot of times you see, like, 
one person takes the grunt of the thing and then other people and then it's almost like that's a recipe for disaster because other people are like well fuck i have a rad song but nobody wants to hear it yeah <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. no of yeah. course it's, yeah if you we're among the bands we've met and toured with we're sort of the exception that way yeah it's always like well guy x writes the songs yeah yeah you know, and then like, we no, play we all, the songs that, we all kind of figure yeah. it out you know? Yeah, that's really right. I feel like that's, that's kind of an awesome situation because then you guys all, I would imagine, feel creatively like, you know. Well, yeah, fulfilled. and the product's better for it because if you're willing to like yeah. have an honest dialogue and someone's like, what if that? Yeah, right, Couldn't right. Couldn't this part be that? Like, yeah. Inevitably, your product will be better if you're open to that kind of collaboration. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And so when does the, the new album come out? It comes out in early October. This is why I need my handlers. <laughs> my people to tell me all this information. Yeah, but dude, that's it rad. Come, it comes out in early October. The presale is probably shipping like today or tomorrow, sometime very soon. Nice. Um, but yeah. I uh, just, I, I, I heard, uh, was it uh, on my mind? Uh, heavy on my mind. Heavy on yeah. my mind, yeah. Uh, I, I think I just heard that. And that. That's one of the songs from the new album. Yeah. 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 And did you guys made a... A music video uh, yeah yeah because yeah, yeah, yeah. i saw i saw that too that's pretty rad yeah we've done i think we've put out four four videos already for this record damn yeah that's awesome yeah so how long has it been like so you how long has it been in the works um we shit <laughs> um, <laughs> see, this where are those handlers at this huh? is, exactly this is why <laughs> musicians are went around like you ever see um uh you know, like there's a, a preschool in, an er, in, a, in a city area and the, the, they have to like take the kids for recess. So you've got a lady with like a, yeah. a leash with 20 toddlers on it. Like, yeah. walking through a city. like that's us. Yeah. That's yeah. what's happening whenever we're like brought on tour. Yeah. They're just corralling you into um, uh, Yeah. Uh, wait, what was the question? Let's back up. Oh, so when did you start working on it? Oh, uh, it was, it was, um, I think we did it, uh, yeah, it was a, a little less than a year ago we started recording it, I think. In terms nice. of when we started writing it, it's probably like a year and a couple months we started writing it. Yeah. Cool. And so so how like heavy is your tour schedule? Do you guys tour a lot or Um We're we will be playing a bunch more. Uh because we started our own label, Electric Reckoning Music. Yes. <laughs> uh, because we started sponsored our, by WeWork, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we started our own label, we had to sort of like close ranks and and we're organize that, a bunch yeah. of stuff to make that work. Uh, but uh, we'll be touring more. We're in, um, we're going to Japan in November. Nice. Uh, we're playing with Clutch in Delaware this Sunday. Oh hell Twenty yeah. second in. Uh, the Queen, I think it is. Oh, hell yeah. Fuck, yeah, the Queen's rad. Yeah, it's yeah, like the, it's yeah, the Queen, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, there'll be... there'll be That's an awesome more, little venue. Yeah, 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 yeah. There'll be more announcements. I mean, not little, but I mean, it's like super nice. Yeah. It sounds I, I, good, too, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've heard good things about that place, unless I've already played it. <laughs> but it's hard to keep dude i know that's it's feeling, hard to yeah. keep it straight i used to uh i used to kind of tour a lot with cky I, yeah in the early in the early 2000s i'd go on the road with them and come out and you know introduce the band and jump yeah. off the balconies and all that kind of shit and uh and i would just get to that point of like what fucking year is it you know, it's <laughs> you just, know? Uh, but it, you know you you don't have any idea what a venue is and then you walk in the place and you see like the one random alley you smoke pot in, and you're like yeah i know this joint <laughs> yeah uh, like, I've been here before. Oh, like, you yeah, know. exactly. You, there'll be something that yeah, that, does that, it that for makes you. it click. Yeah, because yeah. I, I know sometimes people. Yeah, have you ever been here? I'm like, nah. And then a friend's like, you've been there. Yeah. Like, oh no. Oh, no, okay. Yes. Oh, I've been told that. So yeah, you've been there, dude. Trust me, you've been there. Yeah, you know. that's rad. So going heading over to Japan. You you've uh, played there before? Or? No, we've never been to Japan before. Damn. But right now we're playing with this drummer named uh, Tetsu Tetsu Ueda who's from Tokyo, who oh, met, cool. who's a bad, bad motherfucker. Uh, yeah. Uh, and through starting playing with him, he's he's a drummer of, of renown in Japan. So nice. we're going to go over there and do some stuff with Tetsu. Dude, hell yeah. 
And I talk about not remembering gigs. I couldn't possi- possibly tell you the Japanese venues. <laughs> oh, yeah. They were like, <laughs> yeah. I don't. I can't, yeah, yeah, I can't yeah. help you. But. <laughs> no, that's awesome. That's that's in November. So the album's coming out. And then you're basically you kind of start going on the yeah. road to support that. And, yeah. And, mm-hmm. uh, and so what's that like? with uh, the new record label deal how is that just an added amount of stress like like i feel like you already have enough on your plate making the album so then you're doing a record label do you have other bands on that no 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 well no we, it, you know it's just, solely, it's like the idea yeah. of having having another band is like the idea of having like a kid it's like can't take care of ourselves <laughs> yeah yeah uh, yeah yeah but uh, yeah no basically you know, we had the experience that a lot of people in the past that we had given money to to do stuff. No way. We ended up doing ourselves. <laughs> I, so uh, it's hard to believe. Like, yeah. So we're like, what if we just kept doing this stuff we're doing and just kept all the money? Yeah, yeah, that part. Um, <laughs> what if since we're doing all the work, we just yeah, yeah, right. yeah. So that's the short version. Of that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I can tell cool. by the look on your face, you have no idea what I'm talking. About. No, no. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I know what you mean. I, yeah. I, I didn't want to get too into it, but yeah, that, I assume that's because I mean, in, I feel like at this point that's the oldest showbiz story in the fucking yeah in the fucking world right right <laughs> absolutely <laughs> i mean like everyone's gone through it and if they haven't they're about to yeah you yeah. <laughs> yeah maybe i should control what the fuck happens anyway. yeah, yeah 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 that whole part yeah <laughs> um no that's rad though and it, and i think like with the changing landscape of the record business it sort of makes sense that the bands just kind of control what they're yeah because, because album you know album sales really don't exist and then it's like you know you're doing all the rest to get it on to all the streaming platforms and then you're creating the tours and you're doing all it's like yeah you know <laughs> like like any like any agent like how, how about you just go out and do all the work and then when you're finished <laughs> give me 20 percent. i think <laughs> yeah. nothing but wonderful things about agents yeah i don't <laughs> that's my that was me that was my uh <laughs> but uh but no capitalism is a bitch huh <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely right? absolutely yeah yeah <laughs> well you know you know you're lucky if you could just do something that I, actually you enjoy so yeah yeah no i know and that is that is rad that you, you i mean shit you've been playing music forever at this point yeah you know, yeah 20 years 20 plus years that's cool man so uh you have a show on sunday with clutch and yes. then you have more shows before you head to, to japan or uh, we have one show uh i can see again why i need my handlers <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it, i believe it's october 5th and uh it's in kentucky opening for marshall tucker at a festival whose name i really Hell wish yeah. i knew which is why i need my babysitter people. Yeah, but we'll uh, just go to the uh, website or the yes, or whatever. Go to lionnicemusic dot com. All will be explained to you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, that's rad, yeah. man. Well, well, shit. Enjoy your uh, trip over to Japan. That'll be rad. Thank you. I'm very excited. Let's get that Nate boy in here and let me uh, pick his brain a little bit about this uh, this band called Lion Eyes. <laughs> Godspeed. Godspeed, sir. Hell yeah. Down in New Mexico, 15th and 
Pennsylvania Our new neighbors, they got go, go, go We're always on the brink, the brink of extinction It's not hard to see We're always on the brink, the brink of distinction What separates you from me Is that there's nothing left to Welcome on to the uh, Bathroom Break Podcast. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for having us. <laughs> yeah, dude. So uh, so here we are sitting in your uh, in your little workspace. Yeah, we're <laughs> we got a guitar my place office. in the this corner. Is, this is my office. <laughs> we've uh, we've yeah. set it up, and it's we spent some. These are, this is my family. <laughs> yeah, here, these are my children. <laughs> I have eight wives. They're all they're accounted there. for. Yeah, they're there. <laughs> Yeah, there, dude, man. So, uh, so, what brings you into town? Uh, we're in um, beautiful Los Angeles, and we're mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we're here to promote um, a new album that um, we are putting out. About October, it comes out physically, but it's digitally going to be. It's going to go with singles all the way to the end of the year, but it comes out to, uh, for a pre-sale that we had on our own record label, which is a weird thing to say. Um, yeah, that's rad. So you guys, cause, cause Hank was kind of mentioned that a little bit. You, uh, you guys started a record label. And yeah, it was inevitable. Um, we have been on several really good indie labels. We were on, um, a band called clutch. We were on their record label for a while called Weathermaker. It was a great experience. And we learned a lot about the process. And then um, we had been on a couple of smaller indie labels that were all really pretty cool to us. Um, and as we were doing it, um, we said, you know, a, a smart thing to do could be to sign to a major and see if that kind of moves the needle and elevates it. And um, it did quite the exact opposite. Uh, oh, really? It was a, a horrific experience okay um we signed to one of the big <laughs> yeah seven labels yeah um i'm not supposed our manager will kill us i'm not yeah, yeah I'm no, not you have to mention who it is yeah but uh, it's I, a three letter you know it's yeah. three letters and they yeah and I, and I feel like that people have that experience a lot though you kind of you know it's like big big labels kind of chew you up and spit you out sort of vibe and uh, maybe there's other ones that are good. I mean, sure. it's almost like, what have you done for me lately? So if you're the band that's bringing right. in the hit and doing all this, it's great. We love you today, but what the fuck have you did for us for tomorrow? So Development's dead. Yeah. Yeah. Development basically. So, so here, here's my, I guess here's where it came to a head and we kind of saw what was happening in all of entertainment. And I don't just think it's music. I think it's media in general. Yeah, yeah. The internet is available for everyone and anyone to put out content. And I think if you have great- For better or worse. For better or worse. So <laughs> yeah, if you, yeah, yeah. But if you have good content, there is- It does. Come it elevates yeah, yeah. and there's a it rises and there's a space for you. And the record labels 
don't offer development. They specifically are looking for bands that have that internet presence already. Yeah, but yeah. if you have that internet presence already and a little bit of wherewithal about how to run a business, why why would you go to them? Yeah. Although they do have this like machine in place, what I think the, the interesting thing about the place that we're at in history right now is I think the gatekeeper machine, that whole facade of what the industry is, I think it's fucking crumbling so fast yeah. that the only thing that those people that still work on that side of the business are doing is protecting their salary. They're yeah, not, yeah, yeah, they're yeah, not yeah, yeah, yeah. discovering new bands. Well, I think that's been like that for a long time. It's just now it's being exposed that it's that way. Yeah, and, it's and, very and, obvious. And it, when you when you mentioned that about the internet, it was funny because I kind of thought in terms of, you know, think of Sub Pop and then, you know, and then they, they break Nirvana or whatever. And then basically, you know, uh, what is it, Geffen or somebody, whoever comes in and st- steals Nirvana. Sure. Uh, the internet is now the small record label. And so right. you're putting yourself, you're doing all that work, you're getting it all out there. And then once you build that following, now the big label wants to come in and, and yank you and say, hey, look, we know that you can kind of do it, but we'll do it better and we'll do this. And and, uh, and maybe they can really, truthfully, maybe they can really make a lasting career for like a little Nas X or a Taylor Swift or whatever. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I also find it mind numbing in the sense that I feel like to access... PR to access a record pressing plant for your core fans that are going to buy vinyl and stuff to access a merch company. I mean, these, these emails are, you can just Google it. Yeah. Like you don't. And if you really have that kind of money, like if you're, um, a huge rock band or a little Nas X or whoever, whoever, and you have capital from streaming a billion songs, whatever, hire those people to work for you. Right. Hire someone to, oversee those I mean yeah it's it just it, I think it's really crazy the place that we're at now where you do see bands signing to labels and you know that a lot of labels are paying for streams it's it's all it's just oh yeah yeah Do it's just late the numbers and all that it's stuff it's all yeah. fake yeah it's all just so smoke and mirrors for you there that's what, yeah <laughs> and, and it's just it's not real anymore there are no Ahmet Ert guns from Atlantic finding the next Led Zeppelin they're, right. they're creating bands that sound exactly like that and just, you know, it's... It, oh, no. Yeah. What's that? Is that my phone? You can just silent it. I, oh. I'm sorry about that. Oh, uh, yeah, no worries. But... Um, God, I suck. <laughs> Ugh. So... Uh, embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's all good. Um, you should just punch me in the face. You it's, good, Rick? You won't go to... You won't end it. Oh, God. <laughs> That's not even my phone, so... Here, just put it on the floor, because then it won't buzz as bad. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, no, no, no worries. Um, yeah, and, and I, you know, and I think that... Um, I don't know. I, I think it's funny, because what I hear you talk about a little bit, it's like, clearly you've been in the business for a while, and that's what happens. And, and, and I think the mindset back in the day was, you know, and I know myself, it was like, oh, cool, well, I'm young, I don't really understand the business, so... I'm just going to get famous and then you're all just going to give me a bunch of money, right? And then everything's right. going to work out and then it just, you all handle it all while I right. go fuck, people, fuck women and get high and whatever, right? Is that how we do it? And it's like, well, sure, but we'll take all your money and fuck you over. And it's right. like, oh, I didn't realize that. And then, you right. know, and then. A hundred percent. So I think like as, as the time goes and as you learn the business now, you understand how everything's working. So your mindset becomes, why not hire these people to work for you rather than, the flip flop when we were younger is we're hiring you the band to work for us the label and we're really like it's it's supposed to be we the label are working for the band but it is certainly not that yeah the band never the, had the workhorse been the band's right. the workhorse right. it's always been that way yeah but I th- under I the guys that I do think in the seventies eighties nineties you probably had labels that were really developing and pushing and people cared about music I am under the f- the a hundred percent you can't convince me otherwise that people that work at labels now and work in these I don't think they like music I don't think anyone who's in <laughs> to, gonna, I, I, would, I don't think that anyone that likes yeah. in, in at this point I feel like in in, in movies in Hollywood in in uh, comedy and network TV in music I don't think these people even like the thing that they're pushing out because it's just it, it's impossible I mean turn turn on 
a network TV show. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it's ter- It's terrible. That I mean, <laughs> it's just true. It's like why yeah, is yeah, why yeah. is HBO? Oh, I'm, I'm flabbergasted on a really. Why is HBO basis? so successful? Because yeah. they're putting yeah. out these quality right bits of st- you know you have Room 104 and you have and it, for, as far as comedy goes you had Curb on it and you have the Royal Gemstones and 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 Game right. of Thrones and things like that. C- could you ever even imagine NBC or CBS or whatever putting on? Something that good? No. No, just no no way. And as far as the music industry goes, go on to turn on a pop station or turn on, go to a playlist that's in the genre of music that you like. And you'll see that a lot of the, a lot of the top things are homogenous. I mean, it's just one continuous song. Yeah. And I had always, I had always felt that way, especially about TV and film business because I pitch a lot of shows and it's like, oh, so everybody's sharing a brain, right? So if this person had this good idea, they're like, nah, we didn't, like you could tell, I could tell you the idea that you love, right? You say no to it. Then the next guy is the one who has the brain for the day, decides to go with it. Now, all of a sudden, that's successful. So the guy you first talked to is like, we need to get something like that. It's like, hey, dickhead, you had that meeting and you didn't take it. Right. So that, I mean, that is like, you know, since the beginning of time, I think that sure. kind of structure but it's, has worked. It's wild now to see the amount of that. For instance, like, remember when, like, Mumford and Sons broke? Yeah. And then everything you saw after that was like was a guy that. in a vest with an acoustic guitar and the other guy had the kick drum on the floor and yeah, they were doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like five exactly. Irish guys but they were from Brooklyn they weren't really Irish and they were kind of like oh, well. it's like yeah, yeah. where did that come from every band sounds like that and they're uh-huh. filling up 12,000 tickets a night and you're like wait a minute maybe it was cool when the first thing came through that right. sounded like yeah. that but the seventh thing that comes through like that yeah well it's a follow the leader mentality i think in the film business and in the music business sure and uh you know and, and it's tough because yeah you, you feel like how do you kind of you know make a, sp- a spot for yourself in right. that world um but yeah it, it's it's funny that so you know you kind of have to go at it yourself and then by the time you're you're making a dent and making a making a name then oh hey we'll try to take this and it's like well at this point you've already built the following you've already you know and 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 like the band clutch that you guys work with a lot yeah i mean they're they are that you know in a nutshell a band that i would say arguably never broke on a huge level like in terms of mainstream sure. like let's say like sure. back in the day like a limp biscuit got so big right but clutch didn't get as big as them however clutch has a core following right. that has led with them for fuck almost 30 years at right. this point and and they're still going strong and they could tour forever and they can always put out new music and the core group of fans will continue to buy that so Ultimately, why would you want a big label if you are that band that you built that structure yourself? Right. There's no point to saying, "Hey, let you know, let me go with a bigger label and and have them take a bigger cut and push you out to maybe a little bit more of an audience." But ultimately, you're eating less because there's all these other people that are need yeah. to get steak dinners, you know? Yeah, and I think I think from that operational standpoint too. I've seen it in just touring with them over the last 10 years or so, maybe longer. I've seen them sell 3,000 tickets in Detroit. And then you look at other bands that are getting tons of radio play and tons of mm. push. Yeah, I've witnessed that. And they're not, too, yeah. selling, <laughs> they're not selling 3,000 uh-huh. tickets in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Yep. And they're not selling 2,000 tickets in Oklahoma. Right, they're doing it in major markets, but Clutch is consistently selling thousands of tickets everywhere. I mean, right? Th- we were with them in London in 2016. They sold out the Roundhouse at 3,000 tickets, and it's like there are bands on major labels that are doing that, but Clutch is not on a major label, and they're doing that. So if, they've kind of always been an inspiration to us in that sense of like, yeah. all right, we're at 500 tickets, and if we just keep really investing in ourselves and investing in what we think is great people will come and you know it's for us it's taken longer but 
the, but you've had a long run of of doing what you love and, and right. touring and making music and right. and continuing to do that. There's no, there's very little chance we're gonna write the next pop <laughs> dance pop hit. I mean, I would yeah, say yeah, almost yeah, zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but every year it kind of grows a little bit more and it grows a little bit more and um, it's almost funny how now rock rock and roll is becoming fashionable again in a way like it's yeah. like you see that um or maybe it never really went away but i feel like now more mainstream press is paying attention to your rock festivals even i mean there's like danny wimmer presents is this promoter who puts on 13 festivals across the states now they're massive stadium festivals and um they're all rock bands so yeah and that's rad. Are you are you guys touring on some of these festivals? I right? hope. Yeah. I hope so. You you played uh, Bonnaroo before, right? Or yeah, we've yet? done Bonnaroo. Um, we've done some of the more Warped we've done tour a, stuff. Yeah, we did two Warp tours, which was yeah. That's like um, it's a grind. that's the music equivalent of uh, of like Vietnam. I think it's yeah. like <laughs> it's like hey, if you meet somebody who has also done Warp tour, you're like. Oh, I remember that, man. Like, <laughs> as soon as you were there. <laughs> yeah, 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 You don't yeah. talk about it much. You're like, the things we saw, man. <laughs> yeah. it's mostly, it's, it was mostly just trying to find places to um, relieve yourself at, you know, with 700 other people using the same porta potties. Oh, time, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I know. I, well, I saw uh, CKY there a couple of years ago now at this point. Yeah. They were playing it again. They had played it shit way back maybe 15 years prior to that or even more they had played it and yeah. it was like full circle they were playing it again yeah when Jess told me <clears throat> that they were going to do it again it was like you crazy son of a bitch <laughs> yeah. you're, you're going back for more yeah <laughs> uh. just glutton for punishment <laughs> yeah and it, you know what it, we had an opportunity that when we played it in 2011 we met the guys in Lucero and we met the guys in Foxy Shazam and the Agrolites and um a Budo, who was Budo and Greaves, were like this rap group. Yeah. And Budo went on to write a bunch of hits with Macklemore. And um, okay. we met some great, some the guys in Less Than Jake. Yeah. Uh, Big D and the Kids Table uh, saves the day. We met some really cool bands doing it. Nice. Um, it's just, it's just, uh, yeah, we've, we feel very fortunate. We've been given opportunities to play some iconic festivals and, and be part of a really cool stuff. And, while we're far from a household name, you know, we, we tour around the world. I mean, we've toured yeah. all over the place. So I, I feel, you know, we feel good. About yeah, that's right. I mean, that's how we got connected is from Jess from yeah. CKY. You guys yeah. toured with them for a while. A few, we've done a few tours with them. In fact, we did, we, we did a tour with them in 2016 where we shared a tour bus across Europe. Oh, whoa. Um, that had, its, that had its moments. That, <laughs> that was good. That was a good one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> w I think that my best memory of that particular tour was being in a gas station in Norway at four in the morning, and they had all they had were hot dogs to eat. Mm. And but there's a line <laughs> of people ordering these hot dogs, and clearly we were very inebriated at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just what a hot dog at a gas station. Just came did. in and just saw the hot dogs kind of waiting, but he didn't realize that they were hot dogs that people had ordered. Yeah, yeah. And he just started eating them. <laughs> and I think he went I think he went 3 deep. Yeah, yeah. And I started calling him Three Dog Night from yeah. that uh, yeah. from that point. And he was generous, though. He felt very bad. These large construction workers, it was their hot dogs. And you could tell that this was their, like, they were just getting on shift. Oh. So he bought kind of everyone hot dogs that was... Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. I ate your hot dogs, but here's the next round. So we do, we do love spending time with three Jess. dog night. Yeah, I'll yeah. have to give him a call. Let him know. Yeah, yeah. Say Nate told me about three dog night. We've had some great times. <laughs> Jess has been really generous with us. In fact, in 2010, um, Jess brought us out to do one of our. F at that time, it was CKY. It was one of our bigger, longer runs. We did two or three weeks with those guys, and um, yeah. So we've always been really appreciative of Jess's support um, of the yeah. band, and he's actually come and played drums with us a couple of times live. 
Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. That's rad. Yeah, it's been cool. If you just give him a yingling. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. He's good. Exactly. That's all he needs. It's easy to negotiate with Jess Margera when it comes to... <laughs> yeah. All right, listen. The money sucks. <laughs> we will have a case of yingling. <laughs> He's like, oh, I'm, I'm in. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. it. He's already sitting behind the... Uh, He's ready. He's like, yeah. I, I learned the songs already. I'm ready to go. <laughs> so... Yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah. yeah that, that's a lot of fun. And, and uh, so... As far as uh, new music, you guys have an album coming out in October. Yeah. So man, let me hear about that. What, okay. Yeah. Uh, the record's called Panic Attack. Yeah. Um, in about 2000, right at the end of 2016, going into 17, th- things just didn't work out with the major label. Um, our drummer of five years decided he was going to pursue other, um, pursue other things. Mm-hmm. And we were kind of just at this place where we were like shit like what do we do next like we're not gonna go get real jobs we're not gonna like this is what we do so yeah I had been kicking around some song ideas with Hank and Chris and um we went to John Paul who's the drummer from Clutch and we were like you know we got these we got some song ideas why don't we just why don't we cut a record and you should probably just play drums on it like you're our favorite drummer um, and you've been involved in everything else that we've done as far as producing and pre-producing. I mean, we've spent hours at his house, like having him kind of stand to the side and show another drummer what's the best thing to play on our record, hey, yeah, which yeah, happened yeah. multitudes of times. That's so we're, awesome that you have that. Yeah, of course, know? that's great. But then it's also great to be like, hey, you know, instead of telling this schmo right. what to play, just, just get on the kit and play just it. Just play it. Just yeah. play it. And he was very gracious with the amount of time he spent and honestly we went in for two or three months in in their space in frederick maryland and the songs just poured out yeah i mean we had the kind of some loose ideas and as soon as he was behind the kit we were like well that's cool like yeah we're good so we wrote 14 whittled it down to 12 and then recorded 10 tracks and we did it um with Jay Robbins over a matter of like four or five days in Baltimore for all the rhythm tracks. And then we came out to Joshua Tree and did um, vocals and some mixing with uh, Charlie Stavish. And we got it, 10 songs. I think it's, I know it's really the best stuff we've ever put forward. It's just like we were thinking, this is the most cohesive piece of art we've put out. That's awesome. Um, yeah, artwork done by... Uh, Nick Lack and Michael Scanlon and it's it's just we're super happy about it and we knew while we were recording it we were like we're gonna put it out on our own I don't know how we're gonna do it I don't know what we're gonna do yeah um, so we just did it and as we were doing it we were like we're gonna start a label and well the label needs a logo the label needs distribution you know and we just yeah. by the time we rolled around to releasing the first single we were like shit I guess we're yeah, I guess yeah. we're knee deep in this. Yeah, uh, and it feels great to be able to do it like this. And then, and then we we it's just weird to talk about metadata and music. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird. It's weird to me. <laughs> but that's You're an how, analog man, huh? <laughs> I'm an analog guy, Joe I, Walsh. I, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Very good reference. So, so we were we were just like talking about it hey you know when we put out the last record with the major why did it flop flop like why did no one really hear about it so we started looking at spotify and we said you know when you put a whole record out just drop the whole album people listen to the first one two three tracks is pushing it yeah and then they move on yeah so why not just give people a track a month for 10 or 12 months as the record's coming out yeah and then we sell it in a vinyl and a CD and a t-shirt to our core fans or new fans that find us yeah. and still while it's coming out every month a new song comes out this way everyone gets to everyone that he knows about us online and is growing with us can hear each track instead of being like you know as a new fan you're not like oh I don't want to listen to 10 songs if, you, if you're not into listening to albums you're just not into it so right. to get people into the fold we put out a song a month and it's it's been amazing. We watched Spotify grow from like, uh, it's so embarrassing to say this even, like we were at 1,500 monthly listeners and we were like, yeah. you know, we were on tour in Greece playing to a few hundred kids at our own 
show. Yeah. And we were like, we have 1,500 people a month listening to us. This this is we're pathetic. Like we should be ashamed of ourselves. <laughs> and as we kind of yeah. started to work the digital thing now, you know, now it's grown on its own to uh, up around 50,000 and we, it's growing. Yeah. Yeah. And we see it like that's all it took was just to f- start to figure out how people are listening to music and get it to them the way they want to listen to it. Instead of being like, we wrote the next dark side of the moon, dude. So yeah. like, yeah. if you don't, if you can't fucking listen to it like that, then you don't deserve it. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No dude. First off, you didn't write, yeah. Dark Side of the Moon. Right, but good it, luck. Right, <laughs> and then this is how people are listening to music. So for our fans that know the band and know that we're about the full record experience, you have the opportunity to order the vinyl, which yeah. you listen to as a full album or a CD. You can listen to it the whole way through. Yeah, but if you're just hearing about us, you can look at the singles and say, "I'm going to click this song and see if I like it," and I'm going to click this song and see if I like it. And yeah. And that, you know, and doing that, I think that's like the best way to do it. And it's cool that you've basically gotten to a place where you're you're learning how the industry is shifting and changing, and sure, and and staying on top of that and figuring that out. Because I, I I'm you know about a little maybe a couple of years older than you or right. something, and and uh, and I am embarrassed to be like I'm a complete fucking dinosaur. I, I hardly ever use social media and then I like YouTube like same thing with with uh, with the podcast is that it's grown little by little by little and you're like oh man I, I mean I guess people are listening sometimes and then you put out one episode and it's like you know a lot and then right. the other one and so you realize it's sort of like a, a you know a little bit of a juggle to understand what that is but but being you know about 40 at this point I'm, I'm like Dude, uh, I don't, I don't, I hate to admit it, but like our CKY shit came out on VHS tapes. Like what right. is the, all this shit, you know? Right. And, and, but admitting and, it's the yeah. first step to, to realize, right? Like <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. If you have a problem admitting it to yourself, <laughs> is, that's the first, that's <laughs> like, that's step a, one, yeah, yeah. we're just like AA, I guess. I yeah. mean, I've never been. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but I would imagine it's like, all right, I've got a problem. <laughs> this is the problem how do i fix this right and yeah. like you know what it's not but that's the thing is like we're in from the same generation of like we grew up with tower records right that was my weekend exactly. every week thursday through sunday i would go even the, the wall we had the, the wall remember like right the, yeah. the wall <laughs> yeah. we had the whiz we had the wall yeah yeah Kent Mill <laughs> records tower records yeah. um and for you know, even the what was the shitty one in the mall that was just like triple the price of everything else? <laughs> Sam Goody. Yeah, Sam Goody. Or, or uh, F. F. Y. E. Was yeah, like all even the, after the Sam Goody right. or whatever. Yeah. So we're from that generation, and you know what I think is really lame when artists are like, you know, I don't get what what people are doing. It's like, okay, so you got to so evolve you, with it. Yeah. What are you saying about yourself? Like an artist in nature is somebody who evolves and grows, like. Right, you, right, right. You, you, you don't look at the Beatles, and no, no one looks at the Beatles and goes, you know, their best stuff was Hard Day's Night. <laughs> yeah. No, the best stuff is when they had fully taken like, drugs. <laughs> no, but, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, it, I won't disagree. Yeah, yeah. But when they when they evolve, and they evolve, keep changing. So yeah. if if the if the business aspect of it, or, and you know what, I want to get away from even saying the industry or the business. You're just simply saying this is how people, your audience, listens to right. music. This is how you connect, right? With so them. and, and that's, grow with them. that's another part of like the, the music is what you know. Right. Obviously, a live show is the most connection, but your but another way to connect is for them to hear your music digitally or whatever. Right. So so finding that way to connect with them. I remember being somewhere. Maybe it was Portland, Maine. It might have been Austin. And we yeah. were outside the venue in this restaurant. We were trying to get takeout from this place. Did you say it was Portland, Maine, or Austin? It was some place that was weird. Yeah, I was, I was so like, I don't know. Oh, I don't okay, remember. Okay, it was Austin okay, or it was I, Portland, I Maine. The there. It was some place we were trying to get takeout. <laughs> and it might have been Portland because I think we were trying to get these lobster rolls taken out. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like for carryout. Mm-hmm. And the guy on the phone was like, we don't do takeout. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> yeah. You sell lobster rolls. Yeah. And then it was kind of like... Tell you like, what, I'll bring in some Tupperware. It was bizarre. It was <laughs> yeah. bizarre. And then in D.C., sometimes we see restaurants that are like, we don't use we don't use caviar or DoorDash or whatever. We don't, we don't believe yeah, in it. Yeah. It's like, cool. So you're sticking to your guns about your, <laughs> like, who you think you are. And you're just cutting out all these people who yeah. want to be a part of your thing. Yeah. So, you know, I think it, 
I think it's cool to yeah. have artistic vision, but also at the same time as an artist, like what good are you if you're not giving giving people, you know, what they want? Right. It's yeah. part of your job. Yeah. So so you you know, so you've had to kind of evolve in that way and do that. I tried and, to. And that's what naturally I think got you to say, well, we'll start the record label, right? I mean right. that's what makes sense because right. at this point you in order to connect, you're doing all of that legwork to make that happen. Just grow with it and and having your own label and operating that way really gives you the power to say, all right, this song we're not going to put to streaming. We're going to put it out on 7-inch and we're going to sell it just to the people that have supported us that really want the 7-inch. Yeah. Or we say, okay, this whole thing's going to go to streaming and we're never going to press it and it's just, let's just give it to people. Yeah. Or we're going to say, hey, this thing you have to buy from the website. I mean... Right. And you, and you kind of, yeah, you kind of get a, a say right. in that creatively too because I think that that's got to be tough. Um I always wondered about that. You know, uh, I, I was thinking, I was watching that Rocket Man movie and, and like they had that, that cliche scene of, okay, you know, Elton John sits down at the piano and plays what is clearly a hit, amazing song. Right. And then there's some crusty old fart there like, I don't hear it. Yeah. You know, and it's like, so, you, I mean, every musician has experienced that It's so situation. accurate to a degree yeah, that it's yeah. a joke. In fact, yeah. we I remember dealing with a label once, and we were putting out this record, and they're like, the songs are great, but the cover that you turned in, that is too controversial. And we're like, <laughs> yeah. well, why is it controversial? This was in 2016, 2015, and they said, well, the, the person on the cover of the record, it looks too much like Donald Trump. And, you know, when you put that on display in the Midwest, that's going to be polarizing. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. yeah. Tur- turned out they were wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. Turned out, A, no one goes to record stores and buys CDs anymore. Yeah. And also, who gives a fuck? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You think people went to Hendrix and they were like, ooh, I don't know. All along the watchtower, it's uh, stoking, stoking the protest, buddy. <laughs> it's stoking the flames. We, we kind of want to chill uh, out on that. No. Yeah, it's like and I'm not saying we're Hendrix. I'm just simply saying that right, like, right, right. an artist's job on all fronts is to provoke thought and to f- make people think and feel. Yes, absolutely. So and, and, and controversy will come about because of that and should yeah. come about so that there is a dialogue, so that there is something to yeah. you know talk about. I mean, for the most part, I, I still think the record industry, for the most part, is made up of rich kids, rich parents, rich kids. They find a job for them to do because they like like music and went to a fish concert in '98, <laughs> and now they're like, "Hey, I went to a fish concert." Fair, no, 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 I'm not knocking it. I'm not knocking it. But if you were my A and R guy, yeah. I think I'd be a lot fucking happier. Yeah. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that's you. You kind of it goes back to what I said before: is I think you get people in those jobs who've ne- who don't haven't really struggled, don't know what it's like to live in a van for eight months out of the year yeah eat, eat dinty more fucking dinners and ramen and just like scrape by and siphon gas and have to like physically fight a promoter for money and it's like <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah you don't know those things so don't fucking tell me who should be on the record cover uh, yeah i i've certainly experienced like touring with cky early in the right. 2000s and experienced some tour manager kids that were just like clearly like privileged people and they're just out there and kind of life is showing them oh there's a big tough dude at this venue that's gonna kick your fucking ass and you're not getting any of that money and then they're just like oh my god you know like they can't deal with it it's like right welcome to life man because yeah it it is a it is a a gnarly thing to be out there on the road grinding and doing it and i i do think that if you have some of that experience, you'll be much better at what you do. I mean, you look at Lee or Cohen or people like that. They're like gnarly people so that no one's going to fuck them over. Sure. You know what I mean? Like sure. it's not. And, and, and with a guy it, like Lee or Cohen, I think a specifically, that's a guy who backs artistic vision. And he's the guy who walked yeah. into a booth and saw DMX rapping and was like, that's scary. I want to sell that. Yeah. So if, if you're on that side of the table, come to me with how I'm going to make, you're going to make me a bunch of money. And I'm going to pay my bills. Yeah. Or tell me how you're going to 100% back my artistic vision or shut the fuck up. I don't, right. I don't want anything to do with you otherwise. Right, right, exactly. Because yeah. what, what do you understand about what the, the three of us, our parents aren't rich. 
You know what I mean? We didn't come from a background of like, the, you know, don't worry, you know. What's the $6,000 guitar you want? Daddy will <laughs> fix it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Daddy will buy you a new Les Paul. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so I, for us, it's, it's always been like, we have to fight tooth and nail for everything we've wanted. So to be in those situations where you're like hearing shit from people that don't just, they just don't know. So what, like, right. What's your opinion worth? Yeah. And that, that is a hard, unless thing. you're going to make me rich, unless you're like, literally like <laughs> if you change the cover, I, there's going to be $150,000 coming your way. And yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. All right. Let's change that. Cover. <laughs> yeah, 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 Let's yeah. change it. Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. And I guess that, um, you know, that can, that kind of brings up the idea of selling out and things like that, because that's always a funny part because ultimately that's the goal of everybody really. Right. You, you go, Oh, it's a sellout. And it's like, that's the whole reason you're doing what you're doing because you want it to be successful. And I want people I, to hear it. I would say a sellout to me has always come more as someone who's doing something that they're not into and they're not even like, a phone in, yeah. It's a phone in, but you're also not even really getting rich from it. You're not, and, and you're doing something that you're not that psyched on, right? And you're not getting paid a lot either. Now, if you're doing what you love, and then they want you to continue doing what you love the same way over and over because it's marketable. It's annoying, but I understand like sure. why, you know, you think of, of, of most artists um, that have been hugely successful in a diplomatic way in an interview, they'll be like, well, I love playing that hit. And you're like, you hate playing that hit. Sure. So you had to find a way to play it differently because you play it every fucking night, sure. every year, sure. time and time again. Right. And it's awesome that you do. But me as a, as a, as a fan going to the concert, I want to hear it. That's why I'm there. 100%. But at the same time, I can understand why it would be hard to play it over and over and over. Um, but, you know, you realize that's part of it. So, right. so you feel blessed and lucky, and then you have to come to terms with that. And I imagine that would be somewhat of what it is of doing the same thing. You go, well, I guess I got to play that song again because right. people love it. But then I think if you, you know, I've read too, if you, it, you know, like a Mick Jagger. Yeah. They got no qualms about playing the hits. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're in their private jet, and they're you know, right. And the hits are pretty damn good. Yeah, they're great. And I think ultimately, if you write yeah. a great hit, you're having fun doing it. Yeah. Um, you know, I think our general rule has always just been like, well, unless it's like Nazi propaganda or pedophilia, we're pretty much, you know, <laughs> not into it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Depends what the paycheck is. No, but I mean, I just mean like as far as like what we would get behind or yeah you know and i think for us like if we're lucky enough to have a hit i mean we have definitely have songs that are more popular than others and we try to play them at the on, during on tour yeah i mean that's the it's the point yeah and and i and but i have seen like with bowie or people like that where they would play the hit totally different at a different tempo and change these things and it was like kind of fun and then i mean if you're a huge fan of his you get to be like, damn, I heard it this way. Right. And I think that's, that's also smart too. And that's a way to stay fresh creatively. And, you know, we'll do another interview when we've reached that yeah, yeah, level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll describe to you what it's like to have a hit and then <laughs> rearrange it for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, I, and I dig that. And I think that's why guys like Bowie are great artists because they have this vision. They don't really compromise that vision and then they give you something new and fresh kind of he was making cool stuff right up until when he died i mean right. that's very rare yeah and it's pretty yeah it's pretty amazing that's a that's rare man and that's yeah. cool and that's but that's also that's the catch-22 right like that's why he's so great and that's why he's so popular is because he never s stopped creating and i think he comes from that era where he had major labels and labels that were developing him and then giving him that freedom, you know? So. Yeah, and I was thinking about that a little earlier when you mentioned that, that, you know, you look at, like, the Bruce Springsteens or, or guys like that or whatever that had, like, albums and nobody, you know, and even Guns N' Roses like sure. that, you know, that, and, and a bunch of bands like that where it's like, well, let's give them a little more time and this and that. And I thought, and I thought how you can kind of relate it to the film business, too, is Silence of the Lambs was a movie that was in the theater for weeks and weeks and weeks on end, and wow. no one gave a shit. Wow. And then all of a sudden, it picked up 
and like maybe four or five weeks into the thing it became the hit that it is but no it, through word of mouth but in the beginning it wasn't getting numbers or anything but it stayed in there and now you put a movie out it's like it's either got to get it that first weekend or gone same thing with a band either right away hit that's or bu- that's a bizarre here. thought yeah that's a bizarre thought considering that word of mouth organic growth is the only true sign so- i mean there's very there's very few things artistically that explode. You know what I mean? Right. Most of most good art is people telling people about it. I mean, yeah. How driving in West Hollywood? I mean, you see the billboards for this stuff, and it's just like, what is this garbage? <laughs> Why is it being pushed down my throat so hard? Is it because it's bad? Probably. And you need to be told to watch this. Like yeah. over and over again. So you're like, all right, I'll check it out. And then you're like, all right, well, I watched the first two. I might as well. You know, is it that thing or it's like, man. I saw this band, uh, you know, Plague Vendor play at the Mint, and it was fucking crazy. So you should go check them out again. You know, it's yeah, like, that's the real shit, and that's that's you can't stop that. Right, and that and that's kind of a really cool thing too, because there's nothing better than feeling like you're in the know about something either musically or creatively and you're like whoa i kind of discovered this thing or a friend of mine discovered it and and turned me on to it and then you know because it, it's always that cliche saying of like as soon as the band gets big it's like i knew about them before they were right big. of course yeah. <laughs> of course yeah and i think as i think i guess especially in in tv and film too you there's a guy from Maryland, Virginia area. It's gonna, it's killing me that I forget his name, but he did this movie called uh, Green Room. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, and he did. It's blue. God damn it! It's killing me. Blue velvet or, or blue, uh, blue, blue ocean. He does these amazing movies. Yeah, small budgets, so well acted. Everything's perfect about it visually. It's just like, yeah. Uh, um, and you could see that it's not this blockbuster thing, but it's, I'd rather watch that than most stuff that's, that's being pushed on you. Yeah, and, for and sure. I think he's really caught this momentum, you know, and, and, um, um, yeah. I, I, yeah. I think that that's, I mean, that it's exciting for anybody either if you are creative or not to, to discover things like that and, and to find these other forms of expression that maybe aren't mainstream but they they kind of inspire you as well you know i i've found that a lot when i find a smaller film or i find a band that nobody's heard of and you're like damn i'm listening to this like and i'm just obsessed with it you know right. and and uh, and then it inspires you in, in in new ways so what was like one of your biggest inspirations musically when you were growing up like who, who kind of <laughs> inspired you to so my my parents had a my parents are both super into music they're not musical people but they're into music yeah and uh, my earliest memory of music is um ccr's greatest hits and or cosmo factories on tape in my dad's pick he used to own this seafood store and like a seafood market and we would drive uh, sometimes in the mornings i'd go with them and i just remember very vividly bad moon rising i remember um I remember uh, as long as I can see the light, just to CCR yeah. is my first real visceral memory. His record collection consisted of mega classic rock, just like Stones, Beatles, Zeppelin, oh, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then folk along the lines of like Cat Stevens and Bob Dylan, everything Dylan did. And my mom's record collection was so vastly different. It was very specifically Motown Hell and yeah. like also folk but like more Joan Baez and and um Carol King stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um so it was kind of that all smashed together is what pushed me, you know, into music. And then I in my teen years I discovered Nirvana like yeah when it was happening and it makes sense though because Line Eyes basically sounds all different all the time. Like you guys, sure. I mean you go in so many different directions. Right. And, and it's fun in in terms of listening to the band because you'll hear a song and then you hear the next one and you're like wait is this the same this is them and then sure. it's like yeah and, it, and it's and it's it's kind of refreshing to say that there's no Thanks. boundaries on that and you say hey th- this is what we're inspired by we're feeling this this is a groove that we're right. in and, and go with it but that just comes from our favorite bands like Thin Lizzy and Led Zeppelin and the Beatles and Pink Floyd and yeah. stuff like that and Parliament 
Yeah. What's parliament? I mean, you call it funk. Yeah. But it's right. like country, rock, funk, jazz, R and B. Uh, when you listen to the, the Let It Be by the Beatles, there's six different types of music on it. I mean, it's just like yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no one was ever like it's this thing or it's that. Thing. It's just nothing was pigeonholed, and I think. Pink Floyd or even Zeppelin's first record is like half folk music. I mean, it's really, when you think about it, it's like acoustic, yeah. acoustic folk music. Yeah. So for us, it was it's always really been inspiring to think about music in terms of that. Like, we're a band and it's going to sound like our band playing it, whatever the genre or right. sound well, of it whatever is. Whatever you need to a, give a label us. to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's cool though because I think, you know, there is, and that's what's nice about starting your own record label is that you just follow your vision you know um artistically creatively or whatever and you can just follow it in any direction you are because if you do have a label they'll go what's this this isn't your band it's like well it is we played it we wrote it this is for but, sure but then there is some level of like well yeah but we're we like this sound right put it right in that in that little hole, that little like lane you know and and i and i do understand from a marketing standpoint now that we're marketing ourselves i understand yeah. why it's frustrating or more difficult to deal with something that's multifaceted because it's not as easy to sell to people yeah. Like I get that perspective of it where it's like, well, these three songs are like, they sound kind of like soul music and the other four sound like Black Sabbath. And we're like, we think that's why people like us. Right, right. Like we think that's, we think that's cool. So, yeah. You yeah. Know, what's the... And, and that's part of it is staying true to that and doing that because I can't tell you how many times you try to like over the course of me doing things with either the CKY videos or Jagass or Viva Bam and then doing my own little short films and other stuff that that I'm writing or working on where the moment you start to try to think what somebody else wants from you is the moment you fail miserably because right. uh, usually what works is what entertains you the, the person who's creating Correct. It. so then when you think all right, I'm going to do this because I'm enjoying this. Somehow, somebody else does. I always think about the that Kiki skit that I did with Bam, um, and I don't even know if you know uh, it. But, we're, but, yeah, we're yeah, we're wildly <laughs> familiar with your back your back catalog. <laughs> that's hilarious. But but we're fans. I yeah. mean, we're fans. We talked about it on the way. Oh, up that's today. awesome. This, but but that Kiki skit was one that Bam and I did. Um, Solely because his dad, Phil, used to call the cat, like, Kitty Kitty. And then we took Kitty Kitty and brought it down to this other voice of, like, Kiki. And yeah. Then Kiki. Like, Kitty Kitty became Kiki, and then it became this. <laughs> and then we just started, we we're always doing this dumb little voice with it. I love it. I'm and it was, like, a day right. where, they, like, we had this Salisbury steak microwave, like, TV dinner thing. And then it became... Slewsbury Stuvra was the Salisbury steak and then you know and then it's like oh get a little Slewsbury Stuvra and then it just started turning in to what this was and we we're just chasing this cat around with this microwave TV yeah. dinner yeah and it was so fucking dumb, you know, to us. It was like, this is so stupid, but it was so funny because we were just in that mode of just cracking up so I bad. I know, but I can remember us sitting in... <laughs> <laughs> but, but but I guess what I'm saying is like, so that was funny to us at that time, and we're doing this, and we're doing it. And then, bam, gets gets the footage and puts it into the thing. And we I, I remember sitting on this couch just staring at this thing all night. All night long, we edited it. We were obsessed with it. We were just editing it. And he's just like, well, what do you think about this? What do you think? It's like, and then he would add like a dramatic song, and then we were fucking dying laughing. Yeah. And then, then he's like putting all this like you know graphics to it and this stuff. And he's like, "What do you think?" And, and like, and then by the end, we're like, "I don't know." Like, it, I think it might just be funny to us. Like this, you know, this might not be anything or whatever. But then he put it out, and then all these years later, people go, "Ah, oh, Kiki thing." And I'm, like, it's so weird to me because that was just funny to us, and then it ended up working. So that was that right. that little example for me was always like. Just do whatever you think if is you funny. If you think it's good, then it's good. Yeah, and then it's good, and then and then your audience will 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 show up. It, it may not be a huge audience or whatever, but who cares? It's like if you're entertaining one other person, it's worth it. And, and so just just yeah. doing that and and kind of staying with that, staying true to yourself. Yeah, true to yourself, and also just knowing like. Hey, originally this started to entertain myself and entertain my friends, and then it happened to entertain more people, and then you know the fans are basically like an extended version of your friends anyway, 100%. and so then it's just like, oh man, 
that that skit in itself is what really what made me realize like don't try to do what someone else tells you that you should be trying to do to try to make 100%. somebody else like it or whatever. Just do what made you crack up for no reason. And then that's it. Some of them will fail, but, 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 but some of them will work out and people will of like course. it. And I, can, I can confirm that three stoned 17 year old kids in Silver <laughs> Spring, Maryland, 18 year old kids. <laughs> We're watching that on loop <laughs> with tears rolling down <laughs> our faces. That's awesome. And, and yeah. maybe other things didn't resonate as much in the video. And I yeah. can tell you 100% wholeheartedly, that was one that the collective <laughs> three of us were like, that's the weirdest, funniest thing we've ever fucking seen. <laughs> yeah. Dude, and that's, that's totally that's, real. And that's, uh, we were talking about it last that. night and we were yeah, talking about it today. Fun, I mean, we were funny. just like, but I think it's also cool in the sense too that Imagine if you had kept doing that thing, then that's the only thing that you are forever. That, and or imagine you, if you thought, oh, only we think it's funny, don't put it out. Right. You know? Right. There's two folds of that. Because cause there could be a, a manager or somebody whispering in your ear like, don't do it. Rab, dude, they know you because you shit on things. You're not the key <laughs> key guy. Like, you should only shit on things, you know? And, right. And so then I could just you be... You could be the key key guy and the guy that shits shit on things, things. <laughs> and grow into, into a person that does great interviews and podcasts that people uh, turn yeah, people yeah. on to all sorts of awesome stuff. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. That's the evolution but right, of but, art. But that's what, what happened with the podcast was, hey, this is fun to do. And uh, and then I, I just was like, I don't know. I just want to try something, started doing it. And then, you know, doing a few of them. And then, right. then Cossack came on board and has been helping do it. Right. And, and it made it just like, all right, now it's fun because I can just kind of sit right. and do it. And, and you haven't shit on anything yeah, uh, this well. whole time. You have not. <laughs> I can attest there's glass. There are glass offices across this whole hallway. You have not shit on anything, and you have not done one weird. This has been very normal. Dog poop on set, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, we did one with Chad Muska, and his dog shit right on. Oh, okay. But you didn't, and that's that's the greater point. That's the evolution. We evolved into found a bathroom, (laughs) and it's right here on the uh... literally perfect. That's perfect, dude. Yes. So, uh, man, I, I'm excited to hear more of the new album. I, I, I told you I, uh, heavy on my mind. I heard, I heard cool. that song yeah. and that's rad. And, um, and, and like, are you guys super excited with how it turned out? We're, we're beyond it. I mean, we're just so stoked that we wrote these songs and hearing them back now, the response is great. And, and it's funny to hear people say things like, that's that's the most lionized one or like oh that's totally jetpack soundtrack 2014 and we're yeah, like yeah. awesome yeah yeah we've yeah. created this thing now where we have our own yeah version of ourselves and then people are are responding to that and liking it and um yeah we're nice. stoked and i i think before we wrap up today we're gonna play a, a few tunes for you and we're just like dude we're, i would love we're to stoked. Love we to love doing it acoustically it's just fun for us because we can kind of do it Oh yeah! When dude. we're on stage, we have a Hammond organ with a Leslie and two giant guitar cabs and a full bass rig and drums, and it's it's big, it's loud. Yeah. And this is more like um, this is sexier. Ooh, yeah. we like sexy. Yeah, <laughs> dude. And you know what's so rad is that when a, a song can be stripped down to an acoustic version of it, then you know it's like it's that's a how we wrote song. everything for the record anyway. We yeah. wrote it basically on a guitar or piano. Yeah. And we kind of said to ourselves, if we can't play it back on a guitar or piano, is it? Is it great? Like, yeah. Is it great for us? So the answer was no. Damn. Yeah. So that yeah, that's awesome. Well, well I'm looking forward to hearing Stoked. some of that music and uh, and then you have, anyone who's listening, you'll have to uh, keep your eyes open for Lion Eyes' new album. What's the album called? Panic Attack. Panic Attack. Yeah. Uh, I can relate. I've had a had a few panic attacks. That's the. I mean, <laughs> it's just a, we really feel like at this point, it's just we're trying to reflect what's going on around us topically and it's like just yeah. turn on the news for five minutes and it's just like <laughs> it's it's you need Xanax and a drink and it's just like whoa this it, is yeah you know it's um, a very panic inducing stuff that cool. yeah I had to kind of unplug and, and get off the social media right. stuff and, and just get to a place where I'm like dude I just kind of taking life back to like I'm gonna go out to the woods and camp and do that shit and you got and to I and get, it's important yeah. well I think it, like what we were saying before as we were I mean we weren't joking about pedophilia by any stretch but it's that it's that <laughs> what it's, that, it's not this, funny <laughs> 
it's the it's the it's the oh, oh. <laughs> gonna, I, we'll I let, find it we'll, hilarious. We'll edit this in post. <laughs> um I, I think the funny part is this faux shock and outrage. Yeah. Like the elite in this country are are trafficking children in to have sex with and the the uh, politicians are unscrupulous. I mean, gee, yeah, dude. No. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, where's Macaulay Culkin to do that? I mean, phase, like, you know what? What's huh? funny? We're from DC, yeah, like, so I think we're extra jaded. Like, I live in Capitol Hill. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah, like, yeah. oh, you mean um, these people are like soulless? Just it's just a show business. Yeah, it's, it's Tuesday. Like a, it's a joke. <laughs> yeah. Tuesday, four o'clock. Yeah. They're trafficking kids <laughs> into a house on M Street. Yeah, obviously, they're gonna have sex with them. <laughs> Go to Bobby Vance and order a steak. Because yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Go, go somewhere in Georgetown and have dinner on the waterfront. It's business as usual in DC. Mm-hmm. Don't pretend to be outraged. Yeah. This is, yeah. you know. <laughs> You're so surprised by all of this stuff that's happening. I know that we were talking about that a little bit earlier about just how, how funny it is to think about the acting performances that happen oh. when, when they're like, Oh, why I've never. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not like, it's like, it's like when they started talking about the Lolita Express and the names that are on it. And you're like, there's a guy from Microsoft on it. The Clintons. Yeah. Also Republicans. Also Libertarian. Yeah. It's listen at this point, if we don't realize there's a class war happening and it's like the actually the elite versus everyone else, you've, you've missed the point. Yeah. You missed it. You missed it. It's just, it's rich versus poor. And, you know, uh, Bob Dylan was singing about it in the 60s. <laughs> yeah, and 60, 50, it, 60 years ago. Yeah, I yeah. mean, he wrote only a pawn in their game, and he literally spells it out for you about how, like, they're, you know, you're like a poor person in the South, and you've bought into the fact that you think the brown people are coming to steal your jobs and, and <laughs> right, right, are right, fucking right, right. you over, yeah. and it's a rich white politician who's had money his whole life convincing you of this. Right. Fast forward to now. Hey. Welcome to America. Same old, same old. Welcome to America. Yeah. Speaking of welcome to America, I think they're doing another one, right? (laughs) I I hope so. I'd love to see Eddie Murphy come back and be funny because he hasn't really been in a long time. Yeah. And I think we need... (laughs) We great need, comics. Yeah, we need another. Yeah, well, I I would say the Chappelle and Bill Burr new ones have been pretty rad too. There's some uh, great stuff out yeah. there. I'm a big fan. Uh, recently, I think I feel like I found my Bill Hicks. Uh, is is Tim Dillon, uh, who actually just moved out uh, to wait, LA from. I think I might have New seen York. him. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's he is speaking truth to power. Like, yeah, I think my buddy put me on to him. My 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 uh, comedian buddy Josh Denny. I think he's the one that showed me. Cool, Tim Dillon. Yeah, yeah, he's actually a. Th- I, I might we might go to try to check him out tonight at the ice house in in um, Brea. Oh hell uh, yeah! He he, Pasadena. Pasadena, correct? Yeah. He's speaking truth to power. Like I wish bands would. Like I wish more comedians would. Dude, well, because Bill Hicks is just somebody that I I was obsessed, you know, and uh, and and I'll still go back from time to time and watch all of his specials, and then just I I, I had a period where I, like couple months back where it was just like days on end I was just watching <laughs> him over and over right and, 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 and yeah you need we need that with people to uh, well I think uh, comedy now comedy is if you look at popular culture comedy has it is the last bastion of people like saying what is really happening yeah it's certainly not like Ariana Grande you know it's yeah. certainly not little Nas X yeah yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah, it's just not. I mean, it's, well, yeah, I don't think that's yeah their purpose. So it is kind of you know, yeah. but it is tough. But it, but you see, like there is a lot going on right now. There is definitely stuff to talk about, for um, sure. But for yeah, sure. so it, it's uh, you know that's it's pretty rad. But uh, but I'm excited to uh, to hear some of the the new music We're and, and to I'm do excited it for, you. for. Do you have a date for the album or? Uh, it's coming out at the end of October. So we'll say let's just say it's October 26th. That's Okay. I'm just, I just made that up. End of October. Yeah. Yeah, sweet. The 26th. <laughs> We're going to hold you to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The people that pre-ordered them will have them by the end of October. Okay, And awesome. everyone else will be able to hear it, you know. Nice. Well, that. dude, yeah, I'm excited. Thank for you so it. much for doing this. Absolutely. Well, let's uh, let's get Chris in here. Yeah, let's, let's do uh, it. <laughs> let's pick his brain cool. a little bit. Yeah. 
Dude, what's up? Chris Brooks, <laughs> Lion Eyes. Going, Dude, man, uh, thanks for coming on. Thanks, man. Thanks Hell for having yeah. me. Hell yeah. So I wanted to understand your role in the band a little bit. I know that you play uh, keys and yep. do that kind of stuff. And then, Yeah, I'm the organ player, yeah. keyboard player, and backup vocals. Okay, you know? yeah, right. And, and, and I was talking to the other guys. It's so cool how you all kind of collaborate together to help write the album yeah you know yeah, we write everything together yeah you know? which which is amazing because I, I found that a lot of bands don't work that way it's more of a dictatorship than a than a democracy and oh yeah <laughs> a lot of bands for yeah. us it's easier to work that way cool. it's easier to work in like the room together you yeah know? everybody's got their instruments in their hand yeah you know and you don't have to think about like well, what's this rhythm going to be or this drum the drummer's just sitting right there i'll just do it yeah you know yeah so that's it's like yeah. everybody's in the room together Everybody can be inspired off of the shit each other is playing. You know? Yeah, and I feel like that helps you just work it out. I, I kind of witnessed that, um, which is funny because it's a close connection. You guys have a close connection with, with, the, with the guys in Clutch. Yep. And um, 
and Neil did a band with Fireball Jim, Jim Rota from uh, Fireball Ministry, yep. and Jess Margera from mm -hmm. CKY. We did a couple shows with those guys. Yeah, company and, band, and yeah. the company band, and yeah. and I got to watch them practice and kind of work some stuff out, and it was like, whoa, they're like, I mean, it's like the super group thing, but it was like, right, whoa, right. they're actually like a band. They 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 like each other, and they're. They're enjoying each other's company and trying to work music out together. Because right. for the most part, I had witnessed other bands that that are just like, nope, this is how it goes, and nobody likes each other, and they don't want right. to play together. One guy writes it all, and everybody yeah. else just plays the stuff. Right? Yeah. yeah. No, I think when the band writes together, that's what gives the band its 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 sound. You know. Yeah. That's what we all do when we're all together. Yeah. That's why we have a unique sound because it's like all of us. Yeah. Not just one guy telling everybody what to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. I feel like that's got to be, um, it's got to be tough. You know, if, if you're in a band and, and it's kind of that way, then you just feel like, like I had seen that with the Beatles, you know, George Harrison, I was watching his uh, documentary and, yeah, yeah. and it sort of talked about how he had all these songs and they're just kind of like, man, okay, we're not into it. And then it's like, he puts out all things must pass and it's like this huge album of awesome right music. well yeah he's got the best <laughs> solo career yeah. right yeah yeah, yeah, like, yeah. If, he maybe he doesn't have the best Beatles songs but he's definitely got the best records yeah afterwards right <laughs> yeah for sure I mean and it's, so it's funny while you see that happening you go man this this person has a voice and this and and it's cool that you guys all collaborate together to do that yeah I think we have to and it holds everybody accountable you know they, you're never going to get a boring keyboard part yeah, because that's that's what I've got to do is write the keyboard. Yeah, I don't want to <laughs> this, do it. this is what I do. Yeah, that's what I do. So I don't, <laughs> you know, I don't want it to be the, the same boring thing every time. You know? Yeah, it's got yeah. my shit on it. So yeah, so so you guys have a new album coming out. Yep, in about new a album month. Coming out. Yep, JP from Clutch played drums on it. Dude, hell yeah. Yeah, it that's... was awesome. And we got to write all the songs together in the room with him. Also, yeah, which yeah. Isn't really something that we we ha kind of have done that in the past. Like we'll yeah. go to his place and record stuff, and he'll sit there with us. But this time he was really on the drums. Yeah. Which is like another thing. Yeah, that's rad, Because he's man. pretty great. Yeah. You know? He's yeah. Uh, pretty amazing. Pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> so does that kind of blow your mind that, that you know, that, um, you know, all, all the dudes from Clutch are, are, are psyched on your band and have been for a long time and have been supportive? Yeah, and... totally. Well, it's a thing that we, because we're from that area, which yeah. is why we're connected to them. Yeah. But also it's why we are, we're so hyper aware of them, you know, yeah, growing yeah. up. So yeah, it was like a big thing to go out yeah. on tour and stuff. And I've gotten to play. I played on their last record. Oh, you did? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. So to get to do that stuff and yeah. play in the studio and play with like Vance, do a thing with Vance Powell and all that. Yeah. Super crazy. Dude, that is so cool they've, they've afforded us tons of opportunities. Yeah, nice. Yeah. So what what kind of got you into the keyboard? Like like that kind of... I don't know. I was... My grandparents had a piano. Yeah. Uh so they, my, I played it, and I, my parents just got me lessons real early, and I was always like the kid who played the piano. Yeah. So it was like I was stuck in it from the get go. You yeah. Know? I just and started you early. It? Like yeah. I did like it, you know. But even if there was like an opportunity for me to to like, you know, in in early teenage years, you want to do other stuff, and you don't want to be focused on like anything that's yeah. good for you in any way. You yeah. Know? <laughs> you know, I didn't give a shit, but I would always get pulled back in because there was reasons to. You know, I was always a kid that played the piano. Yeah, You'd be like, oh, play the piano for the choir or for the whatever, you know, and <laughs> yeah, play yeah, for yeah. the community theater. And then you just like, I don't know, it's just like all I ever did. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but that's awesome because I feel like, I mean, it's like that 10,000 10, hours thing where you're like, you have to right. put the time in to get exactly. good at it. And and I, th I imagine as you're doing it and just continuing to do it, you probably love it, then you probably hate it, then you love it, then you hate it. But then, you exactly. know, it pays off when, when, you, when you form a band. Yeah, I don't think I truly appreciated it until, I, you know, we started doing this and really playing out and yeah and it was like oh you can do this yeah and so know. so it was all of you guys kind of got together early 2000s and yeah and like i was playing. still in high school when i started in the band hank and i were hank was in the band a band with nate before yeah i joined and he left that band i joined that band he went to college and then a year later left college or failed out of college or whatever happened yeah, sure. and then he came <laughs> whatever back. you want to call it yeah whatever you want to call it and then yeah. he came back and joined so i mean it was really like right out of high school nobody went to college or anything we just went and tried to try to be musicians yeah you know nice. stumbled along we did a bunch of stupid shit for years played 
you know, dive bars and menu. We call them menu venues, like places where they want you to play covers and stuff. We just menu venues, play yeah. Original <laughs> songs and shit. They, you know, get one paycheck and never go back. Yeah, like yeah. That, yeah. Like every bar on the whole East Coast. You Dude, know, that's awesome. Until you we figured out, we should like meet a band and try to do like real shows, maybe. Yeah. Know? So this is when we got in with Clutch and started doing. They were the inspiration to be like a real band, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because those guys are just dudes from where we're from. Yeah. That like got together like we did and made it work yeah. yeah just made it work and they've had a an amazing career and a long career and they tour like crazy and yeah they, they just mean, keep getting how many bigger. albums at this point but yeah that is it's like this slow just like it's just, a slow climb yeah every time it's because we, we did we toured with them a lot in the states for years and i don't think we were noticing the growth because we were always out there with them, yeah you know? yeah yeah but i think we really noticed we went to europe in like 2014 maybe with them and did some shows and then we came back maybe five years later and all they were playing just like gigantic places compared yeah. to, to before and yeah. that's when it was really like holy god clutch is really like getting huge constantly yeah huger and huge so yeah it's crazy shit. too for how long they've been at it you yeah know? you know most and, bands uh, get there you know a certain number of years plateau and then just ride it yeah which is super awesome yeah yeah but that yeah. would be fine with me yeah you know but yeah. they just seem to keep and you guys, I mean, you guys have been around for a while too, but you have that same kind of thing where you're slowly just kind of climbing and yeah, ours is it. like not as steep of a slope, right? It's kind of like a it's yeah, a, but it's rad though. I but mean, it's still, yeah, we still climb, you know, yeah. finding new ways in. You know? Yeah, and, and Nate was sort of talking about that, how just getting into the the streaming stuff with Spotify and all that. It's like building that momentum slowly but surely, kind of doing it. And and we, I was talking about how it was with the podcast, like just doing it and then it's just slowly sort of like more people are listening more right. people are listening and same thing you know obviously different worlds but but you know similar to more people were listening and you're getting and you're just you know kind of got that following and you're doing what you're doing that's rad yeah we started really pushing content out on the streaming platforms and like focusing on it and trying to work playlists and all that kind of stuff and it's, yeah. it's really been paying off we thought for a long time that the only way to make it happen was to like eat total shit for 20 years straight yeah yeah and then like something will just click and it'll happen yeah but i think that the it's it's really watching like hip-hop acts and younger younger acts just yeah. do it they just blow up on youtube and yeah and then we're out there like on the warp tour trying to sell 150 bucks in merch and there's like a line around the the whole stadium for a merch tent for a youtuber yeah yeah it's yeah, like yeah. 15 years old and you never heard of him you know? <laughs> yeah. so we we're like something we are like we need to figure something out yeah you yeah know? yeah and i was talking about that too like myself when the cky stuff came out it was vhs stuff but then yeah youtube's because people would ask me hey rat like how did jackass happen like you guys just put the videos on youtube it was like there wasn't a youtube yeah that didn't exist you know right? and and uh and and you know just the changing climate of what that is i but. remember we used to go we have we would there was a skateboard shop called east of maui and that's where we would get the cky dvds oh yeah yeah. We, they wouldn't have them in the in like the regular stores i don't think no not yet that, yeah you they know were that, like underground that kind time, of thing like yeah late 90s or whatever but you'd go to the skateboard shop and you could get them there. Yeah. You know, so we, we watched all those. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. funny, man. That's yeah. funny. So at that time, you guys were, were playing music together and, and then kind of... Uh, yeah, I mean... yeah. How, how many albums do you have now? What, what? We have, including the new one, it's six full-length Damn, records, that's rad. And three EPs. Hell yeah. Yeah. So you psyched for the new one? Like, the, yeah. Do you have a favorite couple tracks at all? Or are they all kind of no, different? Right things? now, I don't... I'm, I'm, I'm not... I don't listen to any of them. It's too. Oh, you're, it's too soon. I'm like. Oh yeah. Are you yeah, over it? Because you've worked. No, on I'm them so not much, over it. Or... I'm in it. You know. Yeah. So yeah, if yeah. I listen to it, I think about it, like oh, I could have done that. And, you yeah. Know, I that, done that, that there. I, Maybe yeah, the arrangement should be different. You know. Yeah. I need to wait a few years, and then it sounds like somebody else did it, and then you can go. Oh, yeah. That's cool, man. Oh, that's rad. You know? Yeah, like that's that. a good way to look at it. I, think. I find that I like it. Yeah. After a few years. Yeah. And that feels good, but now it's it's like too. It's too close. I still close remember to you, yeah. like recording it. Yeah. The moment when that thing happened and that. So it's yeah. like, it's hard to think about. And it is tough because I think like when you, you know, if I do like film stuff, when you like make a little short film or whatever you're putting out, it is like once you're done, you're like, oh, give me it back. I could have, I could have edited it like this a little right. bit. I could have changed these little things. So it is like you just almost have to just let it go. And I, I mean, chill I, on it. I despise looking at myself on camera. 
Yeah. And there's like a smaller amount of that same feeling when it comes to listening back on yeah. a recording. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, to constantly be watching yourself on a, on, and, and <laughs> yeah, then watching all the outtakes and edits, yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't know if I could stomach it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's tough. I, like in those days with the jackass people, bam days, I would just film what we were filming. I wouldn't look at any of it. Right. Yeah. It's just like, I got to move on. And do right, something is that me? Yeah. Do yeah. I sound like that? Yeah. <laughs> is that what my voice sounds like? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll do that when we listen back to this. I'll do the same thing. Is that what I sound like? <laughs> oh. But, uh, but you, but you do, you are psyched, you know, overall on how, oh on yeah, how totally. The, yeah. The album's great. Album. It's the best one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, that's know. a good feeling, man. That's, that's really cool. I always feel like it's the best one. The yeah. latest one's the best one. If you can't feel like that, then I guess it's, yeah, that's time, time to, to visit <laughs> yeah. what you're doing. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think it keeps getting better, better. And to yeah. have JP is like so cool. Yeah. Because I'll still listen to the first track, Wail, and th those drum fills in the second verse. I'll, it still gets me. Like yeah. it's not my own record, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's rad. It's cool to be a fan of your own band, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that yeah. is cool. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so you excited? You guys have uh, some shows coming up in Japan, I heard. And... Japan in November. Yeah. Yeah. That'll it's, be cool. Yeah, it will be cool. It's been a pretty slow year. I had a baby at the beginning of the year. Oh, congratulations. So probably because of that, it's been a little slow. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I so, have one due in December. Our first. Really? Yeah. Our first. Your first? Yeah. Oh, cool. Dude, it's, that, was that your first? Or? It was my first. Yeah. yeah. It's super wild, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so All this shit everybody says about, oh, it's, oh, it's totally life-changing. And you're like, yeah, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. It's totally life-changing. Yeah. I mean, not in like any, you know... Not in any tangible sense, but yeah. you know, when you actually see your own child, it's yeah, like shit, yeah, that's cool, you know? man. And so how? So so it's really the uh, the no sleep is uh, is a uh... yeah. We had no sleep. <laughs> it was it was rough at the beginning, you know. Yeah. My my wife's mom. My wife's from Brazil. Her mom came up from Brazil and helped us out for oh cool first. Like we had a week where she wasn't there, and by the end of that week. It was that was like the last day we could have had. Like I don't know what would have happened if we had to go another day yeah. without that help, you know? Yeah, yeah. But then and then after she left, it was the same. It was like two or three months of like, oh my god, <laughs> when is this gonna end? And then one night, <laughs> one night we just both woke up at like eight a.m. and it was like, did you feed him? Yeah. What time did you feed him? She's like, I didn't feed him. What time did you feed him? I didn't feed him. We run in there. He's breathing. <laughs> Woo! He slept through the night. Yeah, and yeah. then since then, man, he sleeps for like twelve hours at a stretch. Oh, that's and then another like five during the day. Yeah. So it's it got easy. He's growing you know? a bunch. Yeah. yeah. So I think I'm in the easy phase now. He doesn't walk and stuff. Okay. You know? Yeah. Super cute. Hangs out. Sleeps an awful lot. Yeah. So we're like coasting at the moment. Yeah. Nice. You know, I'm Take sure. it when you can get it. I'm right? sure it gets yeah. tough. You know. Yeah. Now we're excited, man. But it's it is really fuck, cool. It is magical. It is yeah. a cool thing. That's rad. Super cool thing. So is that, that I mean, I imagine that makes it tough when you got to go away and come out here and, you know. Yeah, 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 it's weird. We did some shows in Canada a couple weeks ago. That was the first time I was away. And then now, and this is a longer stretch. Just wild because I'll go home and he's going to be like a different yeah. baby. Like four days <laughs> is a is Just walking turn. with a beard. Yeah, you know? <laughs> it's like you're talking about somebody that's quadrupled his weight in six months, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Imagine if you quadrupled your weight every six months your whole life. Right? That'd be yeah. crazy. <laughs> that would, yeah, that would be nuts. Dude, that, well, that's that's amazing, man. So you got a lot going on. You got a yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah. You got a new album coming out, and yeah. uh, and, and and dude, that's that's so rad. I'm I'm excited because because uh, they were saying you guys are gonna play a couple songs for us. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So that'd be uh, that'd be good to hear those. I'm ready to do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. Even these acoustic things, it's weird. <laughs> but we're, get, we're getting like used to it. You know? Yeah. So when when you do that, do you play? What do you play? You still do piano? Yeah, I play piano. Okay. Yeah. And or like then, electric uh, piano. And the, Probably and just it, piano because the electric piano don't sound very good on the thing that I got right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then is there, there's an acoustic bass sort of deal? He's got a bass. He'll plug it in. We have this little amp with us. Yeah. We'll just plug it in the same amp. Sweet. So you play some new songs for us? Play or? some new songs. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. I think it's all, yeah. <laughs> nice. <new> <laughs> well, cool. I'm excited to hear them. Yeah. All I'm right. Excited dude. to play. <laughs> Sweet. Let's do it. Cheers, man. <laughs> Yeah. 
hands In the darkness I can see you No time to say goodbye You're heavy on my mind You're so heavy on my mind Last one into the party All the heads turn my way All the whispers All the whispers in my head I can hear them Getting louder every time Heavy on my mind You're so heavy on my mind You're heavy on my mind You're so heavy on When the laughter has subsided All that's left is me All the faces, all the faces quickly fading What can